Hello everyone, it's Elizabeth Hopkinson here. I don't really have time to be making this video because I'm getting ready for my new book coming out, Asexual Myths and Tales. There it is. It's coming out on the 28th of October and it will be available from all the usual outlets, also from the publishers Silverwood Books, and it is currently available to pre-order on Amazon as Kindle and paperback, but as I say, other retail outlets are available, as they say, and so please support your local bookshops, etc. as well. Anyway, this morning while I was having my breakfast, I was watching Jen Campbell, YouTuber extraordinaire, do a, um, a video called This Book Looks Like This Book, and it was about book cover design and why some books look very similar to each other and how they're trying to attract a similar readership, and she was trying to get other booktubers to play along with the game. Now, I'm not really a booktuber, you know, my videos are a bit rough and ready, um, but I so much wanted to join in, and I thought it would also be a good opportunity to talk about the design and illustrations of my own um, asexual fairy tales and myths and tales books. So I thought I'd start with that, and here's the, the first one, asexual fairy tales, and here's the second one, asexual myths and tales. Now, as you probably know, both these books are illustrated by Anna Hopkinson, who is my daughter and an undergraduate illustration student, third year now, at the University of Huddersfield, attempting to keep going in lockdown, <laughs> etc. Um, and the book cover um, is designed by nameless people at Silverwood Books. They haven't told me who they are. They want to keep it a secret. I don't know why. Anyway, um, it's Anna's illustration and then adapted by unnamed book cover designers um, who have designed these two wonderful books. And you can see how they've been made to match together. And I had things in mind for the illustrations and also the designers had things in mind for the book. So I'll talk about that just a little bit. Now, Anna's illustrations, as you might be aware, uh, black and white silhouette type illustrations. There's one for each um, story. Here's an example of one from the new book. Look, ooh, are you excited? Here's some more. Sorry, this is one, I'm getting too much light on it. And that one. And so you can see the kind of design um, that I had in mind for these illustrations, and I did have that in mind when Anna started illustrating the first book. And there was various things I was inspired by um, to do that. Um, you can see this lovely woodcut illustration on the front of the Tony Princess and other stories from where I got the Pearls and Roses story that's in my first book. Uh, so that was an illustration, um, not an illustration, an inspiration. And another was these books by Kate Forsyth, illustrated by Lorena Carrington. And there's more of these, which are silhouette with backgrounds very much on the, uh, I'm going to pronounce his name wrong, but Jan Piankowski, who an old lady that I knew once knew him very well, because she was a children's librarian in Bradford. Um, and well, that one's in colour, but you can see the sort of illustration. Um, that Lorena's done, which are amazing illustrations. But um, yeah, I kind of had that in mind. And I also had in mind some of the illustrations that Emma Howitt did for the Forgotten and Fantastical anthologies um, from the lovely small press uh, Mother's Milk books, which are sadly folded due to the coronavirus. And I know Taker had a few um, to sell off. So um, please go to Mother's Milk Books and buy them off of her if there's any left. And I know I have some, not of this one. Um, I think I might have, I'm saying I have, I might have sold it. I might have one or two um, spare ones of some of the later ones. So yeah, contact me. It's sad, but I hope maybe she'll rise again in another form. I really do hope so because she was doing a great work. Anyway, that's some of the sort of things that I had in mind with the illustrations and also with the cover. And speaking of Jen Campbell, 
her book, a collection of short stories, um, fairy tale inspired some of them. The beginning of the world in the middle of the night. You can kind of see I was going for something along that line with the borders and the colours and I don't know if Jen's watching. <laughs> I don't think I really stole your ideas but I know the the designer said they definitely wanted it to look like a sort of a classic fairy tale book with the kind of font and you know the colours that they've used to colour in um, and there's illustrations and then they've done a similar thing um, on here and you can see how we've tried to keep up the similarity in the two even with the yellow accents and stuff which I know that they did that on purpose so that's all about um, my books or our books <laughs> But and to other books that look like other books, and we're going to start with other books that still look a little bit like my book. There is a theory in my family that actually all my books that I buy look the same. There is a remarkable similarity, um, which you'll probably see. But I thought I'd go on to another um, fairy tale collection, Fierce Fairy Tales, um, which was a poetry collection by Nikita Gill. And I paired this with... Tales of the Marvellous and News of the Strange, which is a sort of old Arabian, very similar to the Arabian Nights, Tales Within Tales Within Tales, um, recently translated a bit like with the, the term princess thing, stuff, stuff that's been around for ages but not translated into English until relatively recently. And uh, I can see the definite similarity of these two um, focusing on the, the traditional stories and giving it that that mystical, far away, want to snuggle down on a winter's night with it. And you can see the similarity in that kind of cover to the classic old sort of turn of the 20th century, end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th sort of covers. This is one I got from a second hand shop. It's so beautiful. So that's that. So moving on, I'd like to bring you another pair. And it is the wonderful, the binding. By Bridget Collins. I can't wait to read this again because the first time I read it, I read it as a library ebook. And I can't wait to read it with this. With the, mm, you know what I mean when you just want to eat the book. Look at that, look at that. But I actually think I'd like to pair it in, in looks with this one, this Gentleman Jack book. There are a couple of books in now entitled Gentleman Jack about Alistair, but this one is from the German by Angela Steidele. Might have pronounced that wrong. Um, about um, Anne Lister and her incredible love life, <laughs> of which we now know. But I think it's interesting that they look like each other. Uh, they have that similar vibe because um, Anne Lister, as we know, she wrote her diary partly in code, the salacious um, love interest slash sex, <laughs> gory sex scene, as an asexual will find them really quite scary, um, some of those scenes. but that was in code and hidden away and sort of forgotten or unknown to the public for a long time until people dared to translate them and after translate them dared to start publishing them and the binding which there's a similar I don't want to give any spoilers but there's a similar way of locking away a story of the heart in the binding it's locked into a book and once it goes in the book it goes out of your memory so it's really gone from memory until it can be re recovered so i find that a very interesting similarity between those two books and then these two which i bought together and almost look like the same book <laughs> i'm just saying there's a lot of the pretty stuff around the edges and i really like that kind of thing i'm so a sucker for that kind of book um, you can see the very similarity. This is The Deathless Girls. It's um, a kind of backstory to the so-called Brides of Dracula, um, where they are um, Romany gypsies that are sort of drawn into, you know, uh, Vlad Dracul's... Uh, it's not the way he treats people and the way his court and his retainers treat people. And they, they're looking for a way out. They're looking for an escape. They're looking for some agency. Um, in their lives which yeah <laughs> we all know they're going to end up being vampires but it's how they get there and then um the ten thousand doors of january i actually like this one better i have to say I like this one better this one i think after i read piranesi i, I think any portal thing paled <laughs> considerably and i probably shouldn't have bought it so close to the time but this one's similar january um the character she's called january 
in the story she's sort of very penned in again by uh, male power <laughs> it's not very feminist i'm not very feminist i like to be more gender neutral but anyway um she's certainly a person that feels penned in um, by her guardian and by various things and she's finding these portal doors to escape to find her own agency so i think there's a lot of similarity across the whole fairy tale kind of but a little bit dark obviously you can see blood dripping in this one <laughs> so there we go then here's two uh, that look similar the night circus which i love which is the book that i always say i wish i'd written it when i read it um i just thought i wish i'd thought of this it's so good and then there's the toy makers which i think i was probably enticed to pick this up because of its similarity to the night circus with the black and the white and a touch of red and I've got into this one a bit more it didn't blow me away like the night circus did but unfortunately the first time I read it was the middle of summer and it really wasn't the right vibe for reading this story it's really sad to find winter and Christmas and toys um, so it was much better the second time I think but uh, I'm sure that's a very deliberate um, thing this one, Are You Lost? Are You Afraid? Are You a Child at Heart? So are we. The Emporium opens with the first frost of winter. And we know in this, the circus arrives without warning. And it pulls you in uh, to its magical self. <laughs> so that's interesting. These two, I think, look, they have a similar vibe going on. Look, with the colours and the trees and the sort of design of it I, I think there's a pretty similar vibe going on between uh, The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro and Uprooted by Naomi Novik so the future trees and yeah there's a lot of uh, landscape in it and there is in both of them a sense of a history that has been buried and forgotten but sort of remembered maybe by the land, maybe by, you know, some way. I mean, in this one, going back to the binding, this is the memories that are actually gone. There is this sort of buried secret, but it's all sort of intertwined with the landscape. Um, yeah, I, I just, I think there's there's something a bit similar in the stories. I remember reading them together, like back to back recently on a reread, because I thought they went together, and they certainly look as if they go together. And finally, I just picked out, talking of gorgeous covers, these are two very similar books there's always a theme isn't there books with blue covers and these are books with blue covers and they're also books with blue covers with exquisitely detailed illustration on them with a person and I suppose there is mm, I suppose there is a sense of of similarity um in a way there's not I mean this one is about a young man that goes to work in Paris in the time shortly before the revolution um, and he's kind of charged with getting rid of all the corpses out of the, the graveyards and putting them into the osseries in the Paris catacombs and this sort of sense of deterioration <laughs> um, around him and him getting sort of sucked into all this stuff that he probably didn't really want to be and it, I suppose it is a coming of age um, as well and this is a coming of age but this girl is on an island she lives on an island with um mother is it mother and father is mother still there yeah mother and father um and there's a priest and there's what is he a carpenter or a puppet maker <laughs> i remember what the guy is they make a makeshift circus i know that um but I suppose this is very gentle, a very gentle coming of age and it also starts with them finding a dead body of a boy that's washed up and they have to look after it until a boat can come to take him to the mainland to be buried. So it's sort of, it is exploring yourself in the context of dead bodies, which isn't as gory as it sounds. Uh, they're both very beautiful books, actually. And so that's my quick um, whiz through some of my books that look like other books, although, yeah my husband and daughter did claim when I brought these two books home she said I thought you already had that one so yeah <laughs> I could have brought my entire um, bookshelf there but I didn't so that is that and I really really look forward to 
next week hopefully you'll be able to join me for the big launch 28th of October I'm running a big launch day on Facebook uh, I'll try to link that and I look forward to seeing you um, have a nice day bye